call the meeting to order and then hopefully Jack will join us uh, when he joins us. I'd like to uh, start out with roll call. Um, I currently have uh, Susan, Marcia, Sarah, Sheila, Julie, Art, Prudence, and Michelle present. Is that correct? Okay. Prudence, did you have a question? No, I was just waving. Oh, just, <laughs> okay. Uh, it's my understanding that we do not have any guests uh, this morning. Uh, and because I am unable to see everybody. Julie's our guest. Is Julie our guest? Yes. Okay. Um, as I can't view everybody at one time on my screen, uh, and we have some business that's going to require voting this morning, uh, I would like Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, I would like to have the ayes say ayes, and if there are any nays in the voting, then uh, I will ask the nay to identify themselves. Um, so we don't need to invite the public to be heard. Has everyone had the opportunity to review minutes from last week or last month? Yes, good job, Sarah. I move that we accept the minutes as written. Okay. Did anyone see anything that they needed to correct? I second the motion to accept the minutes. So did Art. I didn't hear him. <laughs> okay. Um, old business. Uh, board membership. Uh, I do have some notes from Michelle, so I'm going to kind of be reading them as we go along. Uh, uh, she wanted an uh, update on applications. We currently have at least three applications. Uh, she didn't know if there were any more that were received after the deadline and asked if perhaps Marcia could speak to the interview date and process. I can. Um, Julie, are you one of the applicants? Is that your reason for monitoring us? Well, good for you. Um, I, uh, the, the interviews are this Saturday. Um, they are by Zoom. And we are once again going to try to be more uniform in asking everybody the same questions. So um, I got uh, a list of questions everybody from the city clerk's office. And uh, I am kind of feeling like honestly that this is one of those applications where Zoom works better than real life. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting it done in an expedient way. And, and um, uh, you know, this is my favorite board. So I hope it's gonna go well. Looks mm -hmm. like Sarah has her hand up. Well, Marcia, how much time will be allocated for the interviews? Oh, it's only three minutes because there are so many boards and commissions and so many people to get through. Um, so Marcia, the, the message I got was, was that it was six minutes this time. Oh, is it? Well, that's that's the information that's I received. What I, that's what I, <coughs> um, I wasn't sure. Um, and maybe because there are fewer applicants because we always complain uh, you know, that there's not enough time to do justice to people. And I know we have extended the commission interviews to 10 minutes, um, but so you're probably right, Sheila, because I tend to give short shrift to those messages until right up on. <laughs> I, I think it's good that the people who will be interviewed know in advance um, 
the length of the interview because that gives them a chance to prioritize what they want to say in their answers. Well, just yeah. a minute. Um, and uh, uh, I'll, I won't hang up, obviously, but I'll go and look. And, and Janine, when I get back, I'll raise my hand and confirm whether it's three or six. I'll still be listening. Okay. All righty. Um, the uh, positions for 2020 uh, that uh, we need to address today uh, are um, for president, secretary, um, AAC, uh, and uh, TRG after uh, 32021, Sustainability Friends, and the Latino Coalition. It's my understanding uh, that we need to do a formal vote. Um, and then Michelle will write a letter to BCAA on who uh, you recommend. Um, I offered to represent the board last time, but if there are any other people that would uh, like to be considered, uh, please let us know now so that we can uh, do some voting on that. Uh, Art has also offered to continue on the uh, Latino coalition. And Susan has offered to continue with friends. Uh, Michelle said that Sheila was considering was considering backup, but she wanted me to verify that that who is offering to uh, be the representative and who is offering to be the bad, uh, backup. Susan or Sheila, do you know that? Well, I'll still be the representative for the friends. Um, okay. And I will be the backup if that's acceptable. Okay. Hey, Janine, how come we're not waiting till January till you've got new, the new members on and be part of this? You know, because uh, I was actually just reading Michelle's um, okay. agenda. Okay. Uh, and if it's normally done in January, we can actually do this next month. And I think that's actually a great idea. Yeah, I would think you'd want to wait till you had a full, you know, your, all your people. Absolutely. Sarah? I mean, I would suggest with, uh, my tongue is not awake. <laughs> now you're muted. Push something by mistake. Oh, okay. I'm suggesting that for the AAC representative that we do take a vote today because they will need present to the commissioners, I think this month or in January, who um, they want, who the commissioners want to appoint. So uh, they will need to have that recommendation from your board um, as soon as possible. So unless okay. there's competition here, I would suggest that we do vote on the AAC rep. So I move that we uh, nominate Janine to represent us. I'll second that. So we have a nomination and a second for uh, Janine, myself. Uh, to be the representative on the AAC board. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition, please feel free to say nay. Okay, then that passes. Um, and Janine, just quickly, I, I did look at the schedule and, and if anybody needs a copy of it, I can email them. But uh, there are six minutes in between interview times, whether that means a five minute limit or a six minute limit with no interval at all, I'm not sure. But anyway, it is longer than three minutes. So Sheila, thank you for 
the correction. So you said you wanted to send the list of questions to Julie so she can be ready? Uh, no, I'm not going to do that, but I am going to absolutely, when we introduce her, I'll be asking the questions and I will make it clear that she has been attending the meetings regularly. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, Jack has joined us. So Jack, I wanted to let you know that uh, Michelle Chet and Lisa Noblosh, I believe her name is, has oh, indicated that you can uh, continue with sustainability as a citizen. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have any other old business? Janie, do you know if uh, Michelle mentioned anything, if she received any individual interests for the friends board? Um, yes. She said that Susan had offered to continue uh, with, with Sheila as the backup, um, but she didn't mention any other people that were interested. in the, know, that the were friends interested has seven the vacancies. Board. What's that? The Friends has seven vacancies to fill. Right. That's what I was checking on. Uh-oh. Okay. And I think that that was the one thing that um, she suggested. That was actually going to be a new business, but we can discuss that right now. That there were three, three vacancies on the board and that she was encouraging anyone who knew anyone in the uh, community or business members uh, that may be interested to uh, please let her know. Yeah, and I was just wondering if anybody, if she gave a number of people that had indicated an interest on that because I recommended a few people and I was just wondering if anybody did show interest. Uh, not that I know of at, at, time, at this time, she hasn't had anyone express interest. Okay, thank you. All right. Janine? Yes. This is Julie. I just wanted to ask a quick question. In terms of the Friends Board, do the folks who are applying for that board, do they need to be Longmont residents? And how long do they have, if they do need to be Longmont residents, how long have, do they need to be living in Longmont? So like a year or six months, does anyone know? Susan, do you know that? I don't know for sure. Okay. I think they, I, I could only say, I think that they have to be Longmont residents, but I don't think that there is, you know, a time frame associated with that. I can uh, ask Michelle, Julie, and get back to you about that. Okay. Yeah, I have a couple couple people that I think would be good, and, and but I can also check the website. Janine? Thank you. Yes, Sue. It's me, Sarah. Yeah, Sarah. Cool. Um, <clears throat> I, this is sort of going back to the positions, but as the retiring secretary, I would just like to say that for those of you who are eagerly waiting to be elected secretary of this board, um, <clears throat> I, I think I would like to point out that I have tried to include narrative that's not necessary for the uh, formal recording of the business we do, but that I hope will be reminders for board members about what's going on. So um, if anybody would like to talk with me about taking minutes and particularly in doing it with when you're in a Zoom meeting, which is somewhat different, why well, I'd be very happy to do that before you leap at the opportunity to be secretary. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sarah. I'm sure that your input is really going to be needed and, and appreciated. Um, and, you know, it, it, it might or might not be a time for um, us to acknowledge the incredible work that you have done. Um, I read um, with tears what Michelle had to express to you and Jack 
and Michelle, uh, and I know I speak for myself as well as everyone on the board. And again, thank you, you for all of your contributions. I think of the times that you and I have shared at the table of uh, numerous events representing the Senior Center and how, how much I enjoyed that. And uh, Jack, I'm gonna miss your quiet and elegant wisdom and support more than you will ever know. Uh, and Michelle, what can I say? You're irreplaceable in my heart. And I'm feeling um, some emotional aspects of your departures. So thank you all very much from me personally. Thanks everyone. And Sarah, I do just want to say to, the, to you and to the future secretary, that I really appreciate the narrative style in minutes. It is so much more useful than just this happened, this happened, this happened. Um, so thank you. You're welcome. And I like it better too, but yeah, it's been helpful to me. And uh, as we as we bring new people on and give them an opportunity to participate, um, you know, I want to encourage everyone that's here today to consider uh, these positions very strongly. I am looking forward to stepping aside and letting someone else uh, resume uh, the president position. Uh, and so I encourage all of you to really think about how you might want to um, take on uh, some of these positions over the next month, and then uh, hopefully we'll also have new board members that uh, may also be interested. Does anyone else have any other issues in terms of um, old business? If not, I'm going to move on to new business. Okay. Um, under new business, we have done the Friends Board, uh, Elder Justice Coalition grant. The Elder Justice Coalition um, has given almost $400,000 to Boulder County Area on Agency and Aging. Um, and Brandy and Michelle will be uh, the core team uh, for on the core team for that grant. Um, the focus is going to be on training for police, fire judges, and community members. Um, also, um, well, let's move on actually to reports. And I will list uh, Michelle's report first before we go on. Um, she said the winter go will be available online later this week and it will be in print in a few weeks. The housing authority work uh, continues to be the focus for a few of the staff at the senior center, including uh, Michelle, um, and uh, she is thanking all for understanding uh, their movement uh, to the Housing Authority temporarily. Uh, the Senior Center is not expected to be open until 2021, uh, and they're saying possibly February and March. Uh, February or March. Um, she March wants you all, I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, it didn't need to, I, at the end would be, would be plenty. I just wanted to clarify uh, with the pickup sites mostly closed, how is the go, the paper go being distributed? The only, 
The only way that I know of is that uh, the last couple times an issue came out, they put a big box of the copies out in front of the senior center with a big sign, help, help yourself, and uh, notified people in the newsletter that they could pick them up physically there. And I've, I've seen... I've seen the box and it, it does empty out on a regular basis. And I think that the online go, it'll make a note that they can pick up the, um, the hard copy at the entrance to the senior center. And Marcia, I would think that they are continuing to drop off like at the senior center, like at uh, assisted living facilities housing authorities, stuff like that, because they've always done that and not, you know, drop off at the lobby, make arrangements. I think they're still doing that. Oh, good. Michelle also says, please stay safe and well. And thank you so much to our outgoing board members Sarah, Jack, and Michelle, I'll miss you all. Um, and I also was uh, thinking that and wondering if when we do have any um, in-house meetings again, maybe in the spring, if the three of you might consider coming back for our, our delayed farewell party and uh, and flowers, if you would be interested in doing that. We'd still love to have that happen. Um, I know I would. Get us every time with food and flowers. <laughs> Sarah, when are you planning on moving? It's uncertain because the building is under construction, but it probably will be fall, early fall. Oh, well, then you are still going to be around for a while. Well, yeah, I plan to be around as long as I can get here. <laughs> okay, that's great. All right. Um, I'd like to go on with uh, reports. Uh, Marsha, do you have reports uh, from City Council? Um. Well, uh, the city council is, has been pretty focused on uh, the, the uh, Costco project, uh, which is approved by the vast majority of people, although the, uh, there are a few affected neighbors that are, are pretty vociferous about it. Um, and uh, we have a new annexation uh, that... Uh, fills a hole in, in the um, business development area uh, uh, by, uh, uh, oh, you know, out where Left Hand Brewery is and so on. And, uh, and that's a really good thing because it's been an incorporated county and it's always, always better to be in control and be able to enforce the codes and everything. So I think that that will, um, sort of be a boost to public safety as well as um, knowing who the uh, property owner is. I think that, that, that it's going to be a, uh, an environmental upgrade to uh, the part of the city, you know, that we're going to have a business park most likely um, with, with grass and, you know, landscaping and, and um, they are, conscious of, of their duty to preserve, to um, respect the Greenway, which uh, is an important thing for this, for many of the residents of the city. Uh, and there was a, a calmer, kinder, gentler uh, resolution that we're gonna try to get other cities on board with uh, urging uh, the counties that are resisting compliance with the governor's social distancing and safety orders to um, be compliant, you know, and not to, not to um, endanger the public. Uh, 
by in, encouraging, you know, indoor dining and, and uh, not wearing masks inside stores and stuff. So, um, you know, I think we sort of, uh, I think we sort of calmed things down in, in terms of, of people being upset with the mayor, upset with Weld County, upset no matter which side of the subject you were on, everybody was upset, um, which may have been the mayor's point because he certainly knew that you can't turn people away from a hospital no matter what, you know, how badly behaved they've been. Um, so, uh, you know, that was the thing. And, uh, and then we had uh, an extensive report on waste diversion and uh, you know really the only thing about that was just that we can expect our service, city services to increase and they're very conscious of of not increasing the price for a burden on uh, individual residents so you know nothing really direct yes prudence um is the city um tracking the um occupancy, bed occupancy of the two hospitals? Um, the city doesn't, the health department does. And uh, for a long time, we, we had very detailed occupancy um, for our two hospitals. Um, now, because things are so intense, uh, we only get the countywide statistics from the Boulder County Health Department. Um, but the good news is, is that um, we're in reasonably good shape. We're okay on equipment, okay on staffing, and right at the edge bet uh, between red and yellow on um, uh, ICU beds and medical surgical beds, but uh, they're moving in the right direction. So we've had five days of fewer hospitalizations. Um, yeah, so we are, this is no reason to not be careful, uh, but people appear to be taking this uh, current spike very seriously and uh, all of our numbers are still too high, but moving in the right direction rather than continuing to go up. Um, I will say that the one exception is our demographic. Um, for some reason, our, uh, as far as test cases go, the uh, 60 to 72 or whatever the age bracket is, is the, the, that the county health measures is, um, is the only one that's, that hasn't taken a downward turn. So um, be careful. <laughs> um, but, but the, um, you know, the uh, assisted living, demographic is is getting better although you know there are lagging illnesses still to be uh, endured yes Michelle um, thank you I, I have been uh, personally going and using the being in the pool and I'm curious every time I'm there at Centennial um, I feel pretty safe but I don't know if there's any stats about how the city's doing in terms of employees who are you know kind of present at sites that are open to the public and how, if you guys have like a read on how, how, how we're doing. Well, what you would notice is, is that they don't present staff st statistics. Um, mm -hmm. Although um, uh, they do tell us when a facility has had to close, okay. they are still following the protocol that says if there is a, a positive test among the staff, they close the facility, disinfect it and, and leave it closed long enough to uh, get that process done as well as uh, quarantining the infected and exposed employees. So that will tell you, Michelle, that there have not been any cases at Oh, no, I thought that was probably the case. But <laughs> I just yeah. thought this, I thought about the city overall and how you know, exposures to the public and how, how we're doing. Yeah, we did have to close um, the permitting center across the street from Civic Center was was oh, closed okay. for a few days, um, but I think that's the only one. Okay, great. Marcia. Yeah, Susan. 
you were talking about waste diversion and yes. just something I've noticed even pre-pandemic and now with the pandemic, cardboard going out, I notice it in my area, it doesn't go out in recycling as it should because they got so much, they just keep tossing it in the dumpster. Yeah. Um, and I actually asked that question last night because I don't know whether I'm the only person that this ever happens to. Um, maybe somebody doesn't like me, but, but um, you know, in the lag between the time that the, the pickups happen and, and I could have wheeled my, um, my trash containers back to the garage if I had been really, really prompt. And the time when I actually do it, a lot of times people put things in my containers and um, they're not terribly accurate about which container they use. Yeah. And so uh, uh, I mentioned that to Charlie Canamides and, and he mentioned, he said that they would find data about um, uh, what the cost to the city is uh, for inappropriate sorting, you know, the, and, and, uh, and we even talked about whether it was possible to have an ordinance, you know, it's illegal to put things in somebody's mailbox. Why isn't it illegal to put things in somebody's dumpster? It obviously shouldn't be a federal crime, but it should be an infraction. So uh, anyway, we don't have an answer on that, um, but the question has been asked. And of course they are, um, emphasizing and, and the sustainability group too, you may have heard about this, Jack, in, in separately, the outreach in terms of making people understand how important proper sorting is uh, continues. Okay. Yes, Sarah. I have a question about, just informational about uh, the annexation that you described, is that area now completely surrounded by Longmont City proper? Yes. Um, yes. It's an enclave. Yeah, Jack. Mm -hmm. Thank what's, you. The, what's the prospects? What's the prospects of uh, obtaining that Costco on the southwest part, uh, southwest part of town, I think? Um, essentially certain. I mean, we're the, we just passed uh, the necessary ordinances that allow us to execute the contracts with all concerned on second reading. Um, so um, it, yeah, I don't, I don't think that there's, that there is, is uh, anything that could really go wrong at this point. Um, there are people who brought, there, there are two residents of Quicksilver Road, which is not really related to the Costco per se, but um, there's a deal that they moved the gravel mining east. Um, so there are gravel resources under um, the area where the Costco would be. And there's, those are not gonna be mined. Those are gonna be left in place. Um, but uh, some gravel deposits that are further east are going to be used um, by uh, the mineral rights owner whose name I can't re uh, recollect right this second. Uh, they're gonna be accessed sooner than they would have um, because they're not doing the part where the Costco is. Um, so the, there's a county road, Quicksilver Road, that uh, uh, is gonna be used to haul the gravel out. And that again would always have happened, but there are two um, you know, ranchette owners on that stretch of road that brought their lawyer with them. Um, even though we, uh, we the, the uh, mineral rights owning company has, has agreed to pay them a $180,000 each in compensation for the inconvenience that they'll suffer. But there could be a lawsuit about that, but I don't, it might delay the mining, but I don't think it would impact the Costco. Great, thank you. Yes, Prudence. And you know, there's a nationwide issue with cardboard 
and the ability to one we find recyclers and i don't know whether longmont is facing that or uh, whether we recycle our own stuff into something or where we sell it because remember thing, india and china are no longer taking plastics mm -hmm. yes and uh, I did not ask that question. We did, they did assure us that they are not having, uh, they're not having a, um, problems with not being able to sell it. They may have lost, uh, you know, the price may be going down. Um, but, and we didn't get too far into that. And you're <laughs> muted, uh, Prudence, so I think you were saying something back and I didn't hear it. Well, the price will go down. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah of course. Right. Um, and I have a question. Um, as you said, you know, there are people who are putting garbage in your dumpster. Mm -hmm. However, if they sort it correctly, is that an, another issue? Well, um, I suppose it would be less of an issue if they sorted it correctly. Right. Um, okay. You know, I have found, uh, well, I actually had to have my trash dumpster uh, removed and cleaned by the city because apparently some uh, uh, some vehicle dweller had, had actually dumped a bag of human waste into my trash um, and it was adhered to the side of the can. Gross. I know. <laughs> I, I, I called up the service center and I said, you're not going to believe this, but I can't clean this myself. You know, it would go down the storm sewer or something. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, mostly I'd get stuff like supermarket bags full of stuff and I'm not going to, um, you know, not going to open them and sort them because who knows where they've been, you know, so I just moved them into the trash can. Um, but yeah, I, for me, it's a problem. I, don't, I may be the only person in the city that has this problem, but I think we should at least have a campaign that says, you know, don't do this. You could be fined if you're caught. Nobody's ever going to be caught, but yeah, Janine. Have, I have people contribute doggy doo-doo bags in my trash all the time. So, you know, that it, I guess it's a common thing. <laughs> I think it is. Anybody else? Well, I'm just pleased they're putting it in your trash container instead of just throwing it on the street. Well, that's um, true. Yeah, yeah. That is, that's also true. Um, Except for the human waste. That's yeah, the human waste is a, going too far. Insane. You know, <laughs> I, I fought to get something done about the people who, who live in RVs for a long time um, because I know a couple of them, you know, and they're decent people who have fairly good reasons for not living like everybody else. And uh, I didn't want them run out of town, um, but eventually you have to say, you know, people, you're dumping human waste in the right of ways. We can't have that. And, and so that's finally why I changed my vote. Very sad about that. I think that's all I have. Okay, I, you know, I was just thinking perhaps if we had a, uh, a site uh, that we could offer people as an alternative to putting it down the sewers or uh, in other people's garbage cans that that might be one thing to take a look at. Well, you know, people can, anybody can go clean out their RV tank at the fairgrounds already. Can they? I didn't know that. Yeah, anybody, anybody can, and I'm pretty sure you can get a voucher from Hope if you say, I have no money, but I have full tanks. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not like there's no place. It's like that people won't 
patronize the place that there is. Mm. Any other comments for Marcia or questions? Okay. Uh, Sarah, do you have anything to report on area of aging? Oh, I'm sorry, area aging on area agency on aging. You're muted. Sarah, you I now get a pop-up message telling me silly person. Anyway, um, there was no meeting in November, so I have nothing to report uh, at this time. Our next meeting will be Friday. It's always the first Friday of the month. And um, so if anything um, is of importance immediately, um, I will try to see that um, Michelle sends out an email message uh, with that information to you. Um, I also wanted to tell you that I have indicated to um, the AAA that I would like to continue as a member at large, and I haven't formally applied yet, but I intend to do that. So um, if I am appointed, um, as a member, I would be happy to serve sort of as an informal backup to your board representative at any time that um, you're not able to attend and then I uh, am there, I'll try to keep you informed about what's happening. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Susan, do you have anything to report uh, on Friends? Yep. Um, the technology program update. The Friends has budgeted $5,000, and the Area Agency on Aging has secured some funds. So together, apparently, Chromebooks and Kindle Fire tablets have been purchased. Um, they will be given to people depending on income and need to fill in the digital gap that people are facing. Um, the big thing uh, for the friends is filling seven vacancies on their board. A couple of names have come up. Uh, Michelle was pursuing and other people on the board were pursuing to see if they could get people interested in helping out. And the other issue that they have to work on logistics because January 26th is their annual meeting. Typically 30 to 50 people attend. Of course, it's all virtual. So they're tossing around ideas as the best way to handle that meeting. Okay. Michelle, anything to report on TRG? There was a, um, an application that came in for a relatively small amount of money um, for a refurb or rehab of a bathroom and for a group home. So we had reviewed that and, and it's before the Health and Human um, uh, HHRB, I guess, health, health and housing, whatever, board um, for approval. And I think there's one last pass. So um, it, it was nothing specifically senior related. Okay. Um, Boulder County Latino Coalition, anything to report, Art? No, we did have a meeting, but there was a very brief meeting and uh, Nothing to report at this time. Okay. Um, and Longmont Economic Development Partnership, I do not have anything to report. Marcia, I am one who is on the quarterly list. Do mm -hmm. you have anything that I know that 
do you go on a regular basis to that meeting? Um, yes, I do. Um, and uh, right now, I, I think there's there's nothing particularly of, of interest to to this board that's that's going on. They are um, reorganizing their leadership and their staff because they lost um, both staff members and they've now rehired um, both staff uh, the into both staff positions with two young women that I am very impressed with both of them. Uh, and they are rebooting the Advanced Longmont 2.0 uh, projects. And I've attended uh, two Advanced Longmont meetings uh, since then. So I'm very happy to see those uh, getting back uh, together. And I've, I've jumped ship uh, from the one that's focused on places to the one that's focused on transportation, which will, I think, be of interest to this board. Um, although, um, you know, I was not very happy with, with the, the focus of that because, um, you know, my, my personal interest is, is that we need to uh, uh, push for the reorganization of our bus services to, first of all, electric buses that are not going to fill the town with diesel and that are smaller so that they can run uh, more frequently and in um, finer grained routes. You know, our buses, you, you have to walk four or five blocks to get to the buses and, um, you know, they don't run very often and all of that. So, uh, uh, and, and the answer I got to that was that, well, that's what RTD is for. Yeah, well. Um, <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, there's not a lot of project progress there, but at least uh, that uh, those focus areas are restarting and, and with more, I think, engaged facilitators than what we had last year. So that's the good news. Uh, Jack, do you have anything to report on sustainability? Yeah, the next meet, the next meeting is February the 10th. And last time I mentioned some things about what took place in the last meeting. There's a, a four-page document from the meeting, chock full of information. I'll see that Michelle has it. So for your January meeting, it should be available. I don't know how people are going to get it, but I'm sure someday soon, hopefully that will happen. But she will have a copy of that and uh, made available to all the future board members. That's about it. And I would like to um, please encourage the board to uh, you know, let me know or contact Michelle if you are interested in positions for 2021 uh, and uh, would really, really, really like to encourage people to uh, consider that. Um, I guess, Julie, you are invited to uh, be heard. Do you have anything that you would like to say before we conclude the meeting? No, I'm good. Thank You're you. You're good. As always, <laughs> as always, thank you for allowing me to participate. Appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for your interest in your participation. Jack? Yeah, I have something on uh health issue that the board should be aware of. A lot of folks are using various types of alcohol, but there are some that are imported that are injurious to one's health. And the problem is some of them have methanol, which is toxic to your body. So make sure when you buy your alcohol for your hands or whatever, that it does not contain methanol and just be careful of those that are 
imported. I don't want to mention the country. I don't want to sound biased, but uh, one has to be careful because methanol can be pretty toxic. And it should have at least 60% alcohol. 70 is good as well. Thanks, Jack. That's an important one. Thank you. Sarah, is the census over and done with? As far as I know, there's been no local activity now for several okay. months. Okay. Yeah, I can add that um, the census is being reviewed by the courts at the federal level because the Trump administration wants to exclude the, from the counts people who are undocumented. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to do that um, since there, you know, there was no question. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, it's going to go to the Supreme Court, having been re rejected by a district court. And, uh, you know, we don't know what this court is going to do, although um, speculation is that they won't allow it. But we don't know yet. Quick, quick question. Do we know what our local, are there stats about what our local participation was or response rate? I don't have those. Sarah? I don't know if we'd ever know that. Oh, sorry. I didn't hear the question. I said, is there a way to know what our local response rate was? Just, I know we kind of put, put out, tried to get people motivated and mm -hmm. so I just don't know how successful we were. There is, and I can try to find out that information um, and give you a report in January. I'll see what I can do. Okay. Just I curious. don't have the statistics okay. here right now. Yeah. I, since this is my last meeting, uh, I'd like to say it was a pleasure serving on the board all those couple of years. And uh, I wish the board continued success and I'll miss you all every first Wednesday of the month. And it's been a sincere pleasure and I thank you all. Thank you, Jack and all of you. Um, and I will say that um, just Googled it, and as of September 1st, Colorado's overall participation rate was 85%. Okay. Oh, so that's pretty good. Good. I agree. I, I, I ditto what Jack said. It's been, um, it's been great. And um, it's just, I, uh, I love this board and I love, love what everybody's doing and the focus and I'll miss you all as well. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle, yeah, we'll see you out there in the community. Yes, of course. <laughs> of course. Really, and at our post-pandemic reunion. Right. Yes. yes. Totally. Yes. Our PPP, our post-pandemic party. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Bye everybody. Bye bye. Any other any oh, other you business? To, you have to adjourn. I do. I, 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 <laughs> is there any other business or anything else that before we uh, take a motion to adjourn? I have a question for Susan. Susan, in reference to these Chromebooks and things that were purchased, are they for loan uh, for lo are, as loans, or are they something that is going to be given to individuals? Given, 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 and would they contact uh, who? Do, would they contact intake folks? Um, I think that uh, Brandy and her team are probably working to decide income and how to, you know, allocate the devices purchased. That's that's correct. That was my understanding as well, Susan. Okay, thank you. Um, Susan, a suggestion. Um, if you if they would appeal to the city clerk's office, uh, this, it might, and I don't know because there may be privacy concerns, but the city does have a list of people who are eligible for the city um, rebate program, which is, oh, you know, food tax and several other aid programs that are now it consolidated and issued into a single year end check for people. Um, 
and uh, so you know they might just if you get. Yeah, Michelle them, said, I guess they had solicited names of people interested in actually using something, mm -hmm. and then they check out whatever. And I'm sure they're aware of you know where to check with the city and. All yeah, that kind of stuff. if they're income qualified. Right, okay. right. Hey, uh, can I hear a motion to adjourn our meeting for this I'll one? Move. Yeah. And I'll second? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn the meeting. Uh, and I will see you all next month. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Happy bye, Christmas. especially outgoing members. Bigger bye. Yeah. Bye, you guys. Happy holiday. You as well, all. Everyone. Safe one. Keep safe.